Dietrich Hill Library in the Special Collections Reading Room at North Carolina State University. And we are going to be talking about the Frederick Tipman Entomological Collection. Frederick Tipman was actually trained as an engineer, a chemical engineer, an electrical engineer. Um, he was born in 1896. Um, he was originally born in Hungary, but he lived a lot of his life in Austria. Entomology was um, his hobby, but actually he was a very um, self-taught, but a very serious entomologist. And he started collecting specimens and um, these volumes um, at an early age. Um, and then by 1957, um, the Smithsonian, which was formerly the National Museum, there was a faculty member who transferred here called David Young, who knew about his specimen collection, which was um, thousands and thousands of um, items which had been transferred from Austria, and the Smithsonian had purchased it. David Young, who um, did come and teach here, was very interested in this and realized that he also had a library as well. And so he started to advocate for um, the library to be purchased by the state. This took about two years of negotiation. Um, it was uh, purchased for a, a large amount of money, but um, it was certainly worth it. And actually, um, Tipman paid to have the shipping. He paid the shipping for it to come to over here, so it arrived here in 1959. There are what we call, there's difference between titles and volumes, and that's just because a lot of these, because it's a scientific collection, there's a lot of journals and serials. So although there's 1,200 titles, there's actually this large amount because there's large runs of individual volumes within one title. It ranges from 1476 right up until the 1950s. So now I'd like to show you some of the highlights of the collection. It was very hard for me to select them because there's so many outstanding items. So this is a fragment of one of the oldest uh, piece in the collection. As you can see, we've got the Frederick Tipman book plate, which is in um, every single item. This um, is an illustration, it's actually a woodcut, which is um, a relief printing um, by Konrad von Meggenberg, who um, was one of the most prolific German writers of the 14th century. Um, and he was also a German Catholic um, scholar. And this is um, an illustration from his natural history, um, which originally was a, a manuscript. Um, this actually is a type version, which was originally printed in 1475. Um, the image itself portrays insects that are real and fantastic. So I thought it was, um, and the woodcut style is very different from the engravings, which are much more precise, which we will look at later on. This is um, by an interesting person called uh, Barbeau, but actually no one knows anything about him, um, which is so surprising. He was a naturalist and a painter. This was uh, printed in London. It's translated into um, French. Um, it's called the General Insectorum of Linnaeus, uh, and it was published in 1781. And this you can see it's a very different um, process from the woodcut that you looked at earlier. This is an engraving. Um, and then the illustrations are hand painted. This is also an interesting text as the author. These are some scarab beetles. The author at the beginning, which is rather unusual for his uh, era, mentions wanton cruelty exercised by thoughtless man on many animals, which is in this piece, but especially on insects to certain that every animal preferring life is feeling, and therefore is as capable of suffering pain as of enjoying pleasure. And as Shakespeare humanely expresses, the poor beetle crushed beneath the foot feels the pangs of death as great as when a monarch falls. This is a very interesting item that I found in the collection. As you can see, it, was, it comes from Zurich. And this is a set of bound cereals which were designed for children and first published in 1799. They went right through to 1870. Each of them had an engraving, sometimes hand colored. They were only about five to ten pages, but they were to teach children about science. This engraving depicts an aristocratic figure teaching children um, about natural science. In the background, there is um, what I was called a wonder cabinet, which our camera we would call a curiosity cabinet, which is full of um, specimens kind of showing. Um, exotic places and a fascination with, um, with new worlds and exploration that um, certainly was very prevalent during the, um, the 19th century.
And as you can see, these are not hand colored compared with the ones we saw earlier, that seeing the difference that the coloring makes it such a vibrant um, piece. All in all, there's a, so these would not have been original, these would not have been bound Titman lightly or they were bound in, in Austria, but they were sold as individual items that came out on an annual, an annual basis. So this is um, illustrations by uh, Giovanni Antonio Scopoli, well, or in his, uh, in his publication. He, uh, this was published in um, between 1786 and 1788. You can see the detail in, the, in these. Um, again, this is an engraving which is hand colored, but you can see the detail of the heads. Um, microscopes were invented in the 16th century, but obviously magnification would have been um, mandatory for this type, of, um, this type of detail. The other thing we should mention too is um, the insects obviously were all deceased when this happened. Generally, they were, they were collected in large numbers and the artists would, would paint them from the, um, from the specimen. Then the engraving would be made for the printing process and they would be print, the plates would be printed. You can see the dent where the plate actually is. And then the, um, the hand coloring would take place. This actually is, um, this was printed at the Monastery of San Salvatore and it's actually uh, one of our rarer pieces. And it is a two volume set. So this is a volume by um, Thomas Say, who uh, is a self-taught American naturalist and is often considered the father of descriptive entomology in the United States. Um, he also helped found the Entomological Society of the United States, which still has awards that are named for him. Um, he made many expeditions to um, all sorts of frontier areas all, all over the country and collected many um, many specimens along the way. He's also interesting because at that time, most of the major specimen collections were, were in Europe and many people that were trying to classify their collections actually had to write to Europe. This is one of the first volumes published on American insects only. And it was published, there's actually three volumes in the set, 1824 to 1828. And as you can see, the hand coloring is very, is very um, beautiful and they use the plants to give it a little more um, variety. So this is an interesting volume. This um, created by Palisot de Beauvoir, who is a French naturalist who was trained as a lawyer. Um, this was actually, um, it's insects from Africa and um, in America published in 1805. A lot of um, people that traveled obviously brought back specimens. That was the way before photography that um, people could actually find out what they were like, study the detail um, and learn about them. He was very interesting. He actually lost three collections in his life, um, one in Africa um, due to um, where he was, unfortunately, the British were invading um, in Niger or Nigeria and um, it was destroyed. He lost another collection in Haiti um, in a house fire. He was um, French, but he was an aristocrat, so he was unable to return after the French Revolution. So he ended up um, leaving Haiti and going to America, where he landed in Philadelphia. Um, he gradually had to build, um, build his life back up again because he could not return to France. He ended up studying entomology, and he traveled as far as the Ohio River and down to Savannah, Georgia. He, after he'd been in Philadelphia for a while, he found out that he was able to return to France. Um, unfortunately, the ship he was on with his third specimen collection camp struck a rock off the coast of Nova Scotia and sunk. So he lost all three of his collections. So these drawings are actually quite interesting because instead of being done from the uh, deceased specimen in a box, these are actually done from his drawings. Um, that was all that really remained. Obviously, he could probably use um, more of them in Europe, more of in Europe, but. Um, so this was how he created, um, he created his works. What is so fascinating with this is, is the printing process and the um, accuracy on, and detail of um, the engraving, which is an etching into a copper or um, nickel plate. Um, you can see the incredible detail on the hairs on the spider's leg and also the web, web around it, which is a true tribute to the mastery of the, um, of the artist.